surprise, surprise. Bronny James declares for the NBA draft. LeBron's son to test NBA into NCAA transfer portal after freshman season. Now, look, I'm going to tell you why I think that this is the opportune time for Bronny James to declare for the NBA draft. Number one, the framing of the narrative. At this point, people are on the fence. There's some commentators, there's some NBA analysts, there's some players who think that prior to Bronny James having his heart scare, which is a very traumatic and tragic scene of events, believe that he was on the upward climb. This is also opportune because LeBron is declaring for free agency, allegedly. And assuming that he does declare for free agency, it puts the pressure on those NBA teams to go ahead and draft Bronny James and therefore get both Bronny James and LeBron James in a package deal, especially as this is on the heels, the twilight of LeBron James' career. Now, I noticed in a post-game interview that LeBron made it very clear that Bronny is his own man. He was already framing that conversation to make sure that there, won't, there wouldn't be any eyes or anything lingering back to him to suggest that he was the reason for Bronny declaring for the NBA draft. And I also see that Bronny kept the NCAA transfer portal option open in the event that maybe he could end up on a team that he doesn't necessarily want to go to or that isn't really a good fit. And so then now he can still play and have his eligibility to play in college as well. And I, I think there's some mix up right now with the choosing of the coach. The coach with USC is no longer that coach there. And so is he going to transfer? Is he going to stay there and deal with a new coach and get adjusted in the new system? Or is he going to go somewhere where there's already an infrastructure in place? Or is he going to stay in California, go to maybe a Pepperdine, some, some other college where he can just run the numbers up? and see where he stands and so there will be a lot more pressure on Bronny to perform next year so if his numbers look anything similar to this year a lot of people will be asking for him not to or demanding that he shouldn't be part of the nba draft and so him taking the opportunity now where that narratives that center around his heart experience as along with the fact that this opportunity that it aligns with lebron james declaring for nba free agency the timing is actually perfect and the reality is that Bronny james can only get better because when you think about it who better to learn from than one of the greatest in the league that being your father and actually getting the reps in on the nba team and and then you make history i mean it's absolutely box office as Bronny is entering the league and lebron is phasing out almost a passing of the torch if you will and it's not even to put him in the same ilk as LeBron, but just to say, just to see that after all these years playing for over 20 plus years and a father son dynamic, that definitely can lead to being box office for the league, right? And what I think in this situation, uh, which the title of this series, this is centered around the rise of a king. And what we understand about kingship is that it centers around succession. Always remember that no matter what you do, when you're thinking about the next 100 years, you're thinking about your children's children, you're thinking about the position that they will be in, and you want to make sure that you're leveraging your position, leveraging your resources and your opportunities to put your children in a better place than you were. Things shouldn't be as difficult, but you want them to make sure that they understand and they appreciate the sacrifices that you're making to put them in the position that they're in. And I think for all of us, whether you're a father, or soon to be father or husband or whatever the circumstance may be, you have people that you look at and you say, okay, I have some guidance, I have some wisdom, I have some knowledge, some understanding that I can impart on to you. And so when you look at this Bronny James, LeBron James dynamic, he can learn from his father by joining him. And this also can be a storybook ending for LeBron James as well. So let's let's check this out. Ironically enough, I see that this is Kyle Irving. So um, shout out to Kyrie Irving, right? All right, let's keep going. So Bronny James declared for the 2024 NBA draft and entered the transfer portal. The athletic sham Sharania announced Friday. 
after plenty of rumors and speculation about his future after an up and down freshman season at USC, LeBron's son will, will officially test the NBA draft waters and reopen his recruiting. And again, so we're already seeing that time is limited. Nothing can be planned. You never know what may happen, may get injured, may have another health scare. He's already had an up and down season. So this may be the best time, just strategically. And again, for the men that are listening, yes, this is about Bronny James, but I, we're always looking on a court perspective, understanding the underlying principles that guide our decisions. When you look at it from a militaristic lens, this allows you to infiltrate and to get in in a more seamless fashion with less scrutiny on you, all right? Uh, James' first college season was anything but traditional. The 19-year-old suffered cardiac arrest during a workout in July, putting his life on hold for four months. When he finally returned to the court, James was on a minutes restriction for the first four games. It wasn't until the Trojans were 13 games into the season that the star freshman handled a full workload. I mean, and that's understandable. We see that happen all the time where you you got to work yourself back into condition, work yourself back into shape, your timing, your rhythm. Everything is off. You're still trying to get adjusted to what normal looks like for you after the injury, right? And we, I mean, we've seen it with players in the league. We've seen it with Kawhi Leonard, seen it with Paul George, seen it with Anthony Davis, seen it with LeBron. Like we've seen this time and time again with a, with a lot of players. It just takes that that time. And Russell Westbrook, et cetera. As a result, James and USC came up short of expectations. And honestly, I did have certain expectations for them. Uh, especially Bronny James, but I do understand the situation. And I think that that's also what, what the, the science behind Bronny declaring for the draft, because I understand it. So uh, other people are definitely going to encourage that and look at it from that lens as well. The Trojans missed the NCAA tournament, and James only averaged 4.8 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 2.1 assists per game. Now, the question that I have for you is, if LeBron James wasn't involved, do you think that Bronny James was still – declare for the NBA draft? Do you think that he'll still be considered in a prime position that he's currently in? That's, these are interesting questions to raise. Definitely comment. In addition to his unique medical situation, James wasn't in the best situation to showcase his potential plan behind senior guard Boogie Ellis and top-ranked freshman guard Isaiah Collier. Now he will go through the pre-draft process by maintaining his college eligibility with a possible change of scenery. So you're keeping, you're keeping, you're keeping multiple doors open, right? And this is Sham Sharania, and that's definitely on, on on the payroll for the James family, for sure. He's been around a long time. The combo guard will work out for and visit NBA teams and make a draft decision based on evaluation. The news comes a few days after a coaching change at USC, former Trojans head coach. I, I just said this. Uh, Andy Enfield, whose staff played a, a role in recruiting Bunny, left to take the job at SMU. Four days later, USC hired former Arkansas head coach Eric Musselman. Now, look, I think that the coaching definitely played a part in the fact that he had other starters. That's going to definitely play a part because when you even even when you look at players who go from starting to the bench, the the minutes, the production, the rhythm, wh when you're coming in, when you, you all of those things matter, especially when we're talking about playing basketball. Uh, James appeared in 25 or 33 available games for USC during his freshman season, coming off the bench all but six times. The Trojans owned a disappointing 15-18 overall record going 8-12 to finish ninth in the Pac-12. He only scored double-digit points in three games and played fewer than 20 minutes in 15 games. So he's playing less than 20 minutes, still trying to find a rhythm. I mean, it makes sense. As his freshman season was coming to a close, his agent, Rich Paul, told ESPN that Clutch Sports intends to find James the best possible situation at the next level. I don't value any young player getting into a lottery as much as I do getting him on the right team in the right developmental situation. These are all choice words. We know what this means. What this means is that he needs to go to the same team with his father, and his father needs to go to either the team that's in L.A. or the team that's in New York, and we're not talking about the Mets. That's what that, that's what that means. Right. This is the coded language. These are the euphemisms that we that we use. You're just not going to just put Brian James or LeBron James and or LeBron James on any team. It's going to make sense for them and their brand. He added that LeBron, of course, would be head over heels excited if they teamed up organically. But LeBron wants Brian to be his own man. What's this right here? 
LeBron tweets and deletes strong reaction to ESPN leaving Brian. Okay. Oh, we saw, we saw that. All right. The 6'4 guard has shown flashes of pro-level skill, smart, and tenacious on-ball defender with a smooth shooting stroke, even if he had streaky numbers this past season. He's a connected playmaker who can play on or off the ball, making him a potential fit on just about any roster. James had a plethora of options to choose from as a four-star high school recruit. He originally chose USC over offers from Kentucky, Memphis, Michigan, Ohio State, and Oregon. According to ESPN, he drew interest from high major Division I schools like Duke, Kansas, Michigan, North Carolina, and UCLA. It is also worth noting that his father's high school teammate and close friend, Drew Joyce III, took, just took over the head coaching job. And so, look, at the end of the day, here's the reality, right? Everything is about timing. And what better time than now? You have the narrative behind you. You have the alignment with LeBron, supposedly the plan for the NBA free agency. You have an opportunity where it may either be LA or it may be New York. Who will it be? That's that's the stay tuned. But I definitely think that it was important for us to at least have this conversation, uh, start thinking about secession. So when you see the series and you see that it's titled The Rise of the King, everything is about secession. Leadership is about secession. For those that are in some form of anime, one of my favorite shows is Dragon Ball Z. And what did we see happen in the sales side with Goku? Goku was preparing his son to take over the mantle of leadership, right? So these are things that we all we all should do. So what, where, regardless of how you feel about LeBron or you feel about Bronny, look at it from the context that this is about secession. And I am preparing you to be in a better position than I was in. And that's a beautiful thing just at its core. I will see what happens on the basketball court, but just that at, at its core, father, son, that dynamic, the rise of a king, that mantle of leadership, a children's children's inheritance that you're leaving behind. Oh, man, let's go. Oh, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the Porter Perspective. I'll be back for another one.